Well, things might be different where you are, but around here at least, we have these roving gangs of deer that show no compunction about treating my garden like it was some sort of frickin' all-you-can-eat buffet. And uh, last year I decided that was enough of that and I bought some of that deer screen, you know, the plastic stuff. Ah, I'll show it to you in a second. That, uh, and I just wrapped it around these posts here. Kept them out, but uh, the problem with that is uh, you can't get in very easy. And uh, it also turns into a super shit show when you get your mower caught in that stuff or your weed whacker. So this year I thought I got to do something different and uh, that's what this is about. So I think I've come up with a cheap and easy solution to keep the deer out of your, your lovelies. So uh, let's get right to it, eh? This is the deer netting here. It's uh, super cheap, comes on a big roll. Not much to it though, it's not very robust, but that really doesn't matter, it'll keep the deer out. You're also gonna need some of this stuff. It's an electrical conduit, because we do everything on the cheap here. This stuff is crazy cheap for some reason. I don't know why. It comes 10 foot sections, maybe cost you eight bucks a piece. <laughs> it's stupid, I don't know. It's galvanized, doesn't rust. Anyway, uh, it's a good rigid tube and uh, perfect for this application. You're also going to need some of these. These are galvanized washers, uh, half inch on the ID and maybe one and a quarter on the OD. I don't know. Anyway, you, they're pretty standard size, so get yourself a pack of these. Depend you'll see how many you need pretty soon. The next step is to design a few clips in your favorite 3D modeling program. Oh wait, it looks like I've already done that for you, so I guess we'll move on to the next step. So I'll put these designs on Thingiverse in case you're crazy enough to want to try this. So fire up the 3D printer and burn through some filament and you should be left with a bucket full of doodads and kajiggers. Now you want to go ahead and make yourself a little frame couple of posts and you can string a, an appropriate length of that uh, conduit in between. You need to drill uh, three quarter inch holes for this conduit. Um, and you don't need any supports if you run the whole 10 feet. <laughs> you don't actually need any extra supports. So uh, just two posts, one on either end of your bed. Totally fine. Next, get out a few of these clips and just snap them onto the post. Uh, they should sort of half friction fit. This is a little loose. I probably should have printed these out of Pet G. I did it out of PLA. Dumb. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you probably have better luck with it um, not deforming. Anyway, this is a four inch span. I'm going to put three clips on here. You probably get away with two, but yeah, whatever. You can cut out an appropriate size piece of deer netting and then you take one of these male round clips here with the holes in it and there's one hole that's larger and that just snaps into there. Your deer netting, if I can get this flopping around, goes in like this and then the female portion of that clip just snaps into there. And I, I did start out using um, like just hooks, <laughs> but the hooks will just tear right through this stuff. So you need a little more surface area for grip. That's why there's these weird clips. And then just continue that so that they're evenly spaced along the bar. There, so now the deer netting is stretched across the top and the problem is that the this just flaps in the breeze so uh, you need some weight at the bottom to bring it down. I'm sure you've already surmised that we're going to use the heavy-duty washers to give some downward force to the netting and uh, there are two different types of clips for that. Uh, there's this roundy and roundy clip uh, where you're just gonna stick the washer in that little groove and then snap this in place and then there's the L-shaped one with the little notchy, uh, little notchy piece there. And these ones go at, on either end of the net and these ones go in the middle. And you're gonna see why in a second, uh, because what we're gonna do right now is there's a little depression, a little cavity on this little L piece and we're gonna stick a little uh, neodymium magnet in there 
So I'm just going to put some CA glue in the cavity, snap that in, and here's a little trick. If you get any on your fingers, don't worry about it. You just wipe your eye and that'll take it right off. So there we go. That's what you're looking for there. So that goes with that. And then when you snap these together, the little notched piece goes in this, uh, you know, whatever you call that slot, I guess. And so when that snaps down, like so, then this can't rotate. Now, not that it can very well easily rotate on its own, but I just thought just in case, you know, you don't want the thing rotating out in the field. So that's that. And of course, these ones are, uh, you know, you can remove them because you might put them in the wrong spot. So the clips are removable. Okay, so let's get out there and put these on. Oh, one more thing. So I forgot actually two things that you're going to need for this. You're also going to need uh, the magnets and of course, well, some glue and uh, these fender washers. Uh, they have a little small hole and then lots of uh, metal around them. So <laughs> yeah, fender washers. I don't know why they're called that. But anyway, uh, yeah, this is, uh, you're going to need a handful of these for a very special reason you're going to find out soon. Okay, let's get out there. Ooh, all right, to install these little clips, uh, I think you should start with the uh, ones close to the post, which means you're going to use these L-shaped ones. The easiest way to do this, I think, is to uh, put in the fender washer first, and that goes right against here. Uh, you kind of just want to estimate where that fender washer should go by taking your L-shaped bracket and seeing where it kind of meets up. So it's going to meet up right about there. Whoops, all right. Should put a seizure warning on here, I guess. And so we'll just fire the fender washer in there. Okay, so now just click that to there. Now the these clips need to go directly below the clip at the top there, you know, the white clip. So just make sure that that's happening. And then all you have to do is bring your netting in. Take the clip, oh, and make sure that the little slotted end is going in the little groove. And, oh, I forgot the frickin' washer in there. Come on, isn't anybody paying attention here? Okay, click, bring the netting down. It's really not that hard. And then click this into place, just like that. Okay, now we go to the other side. And then you want to make it a little bit taut. And where's the slot? Right there. I don't know, did I explain what the slot was for? The slot is to keep this from rotating. I don't think it actually is going to, but yeah, you know, just in case. And then for the center one, all you want to do is you make, up, make sure that it comes down just below where that is. Something like that. These ones are very, very forgiving. Click. And that's it. You're done. So, I'm just going to finish up the rest of these and then we'll take a little perusal. All my beds are now fortified and I uh, capped off the ends with a little bit of netting and a staple gun. Easy peasy. And this is how it works. If you want to weed something in there, you just slide this off, unclip it, roll it back, and then get in there. Do what you need to do. Weeding. Fun times. And uh, when you're done, you know, the procedure is the reverse. Slide and when you get to the end, just click that in place. This turned out to be quite a bit easier than the uh, four mile ice wall I had originally planned. Although, come to think of it, that might have been to keep out the white walkers, not the white tailed deer. Here's an earlier prototype of the uh, bottom clip here. Uh, basically the same idea, except this little cylinder was an add-on and you have to glue it onto these pieces, which makes this non-removable anymore, so kind of a pain in the ass, which is why I redesigned it in that L shape. And here's one more late entry design modification. I just put a little piece of electrical tape right here. That's because these things, uh, they tend to migrate around a little bit. I mean, they can't go very far, mind you, but eh, they don't look pretty. So uh, putting a little tape there just uh, snugs them up keeps them in place. And it has the advantage of preventing your tubes from sliding out the other direction. 
Oh, yappy dogs. You gotta love them. Remember that time I said I shouldn't be printing these out of PLA? Well, there's the reason why. Because get a little bit warm and these start to deform slightly and because they're just like snap fit. Look at that. Doesn't even hold at all. So, uh, yeah, the lesson here is print out of something that's heat tolerant like PETG or, God forbid, ABS. You don't want to really use that stinky shit. But, uh, yeah, PETG should do it. I'll print a few more of those and we'll field test them a bit and see if uh, changing the plastic will help. I assume it will. All told, you're looking at about 30 bucks per bed in order to keep the deer out of your garden. Uh, it's not terrible. It's not free, mind you, but it's not too bad. I don't know that there's a cheaper way that uh, won't end up making you insane. Now, admittedly, 30 bucks will buy you a lot of cucumbers, but uh, where's the fun in that, eh? And there isn't any reason you can't just leave these up all year, uh, as far as I can tell, anyway. If you want to put them away, it's pretty easy. You can just uh, pull off the poles and roll the, the netting up on it. And... Uh, tuck them away somewhere. So I think we're gonna call this one done. I do believe my chances of surviving the winter this year must have gone up by at least 10% because you know winter is coming. Ooh, two Game of Thrones references in one video. That's got to be some kind of record. Thanks for watching everybody. Cheers. And if you're interested in what I'm growing here, we've got uh, Persian cucumbers there. You know, those are the little tiny ones, expensive. And these are English cucumbers. Those are the real long ones, also expensive. Uh, these are uh, yellow squash, just bright yellow squash, apparently. So we'll see if that's true. And over here, we got the assorted uh, red and green peppers. And that's a, uh, I believe, a serrano over there. Aubergine eggplant right there. And this is uh, spaghetti squash that I just uh, was cooking up a spaghetti squash and took the seeds and dropped them in there. Look, making more. Uh, Napa cabbage, and beside them um, is something called pixie cabbage. About a handful of cabbage, I think. We'll see. They should taste good if they work out. And over here we have assorted tomatoes. Rainbow chard. Yum yum. On this side is, uh, well, I've got dill planted along the bottom there, and then these are something called uh, pole noodle king beans or something. Anyway, they're some sort of maybe Thai thing. They're, uh, they're beans, they're green beans, but they're super long, I guess. You know, like a couple feet long. Maybe I'm exaggerating, I don't know, we'll see. And these are San Marzano's, because everybody needs sauce.